Hey viewers, today we're on the buses. We are in Rotherham, England. This massive roof below us is the former home of First Buses Midland Road Depot. One of the largest of its kind. First Bus closed the site in 2017 simply due to not requiring such a large site. The Midland Road Depot then spent a time as a police firearms training centre and more recently as part of the national testing system for COVID-19. Now silent and totally abandoned by its owners, outside near the main entrance, travellers have moved on to the frontal areas. The site was transferred to the Mayoral Combined Authority in 2016 and documents we found state that the inability to let the site on the open market equally reflects the scale and specialist nature of much of the design of the asset, but also the poor state of the infrastructure. It also states that it is seeking authority to begin the disposal process of the bus depot site at Midland Road. It is costing the authority £160,000 a year for security and business rates, which continues to be a drain on their revenue budget. The report also adds that funding has been identified to demolish the building if it does not sell. The Midland Road site is indeed up for sale and a demolition permit has been granted. Let's now take a look around this giant abandonment. Yeah, we were just saying, Paul and I, we were just saying it smells of tyres and oil and that real on the buses smell. It's such a huge place and this is only half of it. There's another one through there. We're going to go to the offices at the top and then we'll check all this out on the way out. There's some uh, travellers on site here, they pulled on this morning. So we're just trying to stay out of their way, don't want to interrupt them. As we're looking here at the... Now this is a rolling road. So this would have been to check the brakes on the on the buses. That's the brake tester machine. There would have been further equipment on here. But that's the back of the rolling road for the brake test. There's the people that were allowed to use it. Rolling road. There's other large pits here as well. Inspection pits here. And all the hoses that were for topping up and pressurising and getting the buses ready for the road again. Let's see what they've done there. Safety first. Ah, boiler room. So here, the water heater. And these, that's the boiler. This is an air handling unit. This is what heats the air before it goes into the staff areas and I believe this will be that'll be out onto that mezzanine again just through here then we've got the electrical low voltage distribution there I think the metal thieves have been and stripped it all out very recently by the looks we've got the upstairs offices here all cleared out with quite a commanding view over the bus depot. Now I've got a vehicle vehicle board there. Let's see if this has got any information on it. So we've got all the uh, bus numbers and what the uh, service state of them was right on there Put some more stuff on there commercial unit loan buses there we go. so people have been coming here since 2017 
So it's been five years this place has been going as an airbag site. Uh, it was sealed for quite a while, but it was opened very recently. Probably won't go up here much. Yeah, it's just air ducting. Things like that. Nothing much to see up there, but I thought I'd just give you a look of it anyway. And that is the skylights above that are a feature of this very large building. Ah, locker room. So that's what. The, so this was a locker room, and that's a picture reminding people what it should look like. So this was the bus driver's locker room. Wow, that's quite cool. That to have a picture of what it used to look like and what it looks like now. And all they've really done is strip the lockers out. So the bus drivers roll spick and span before the day in the bus. Yeah, that decay on there. You only need a little bit of water coming in, and this happens. You got all the moss growing on the uh, on the wall. Oh, wow. I reckon this was the rec room because there's a dartboard back there. There's an old email there. When's that from? 2018. This has all been stripped out. This is why bus drivers would have had the cup, cups of tea. Played a bit of darts before they got back on the road again. What's out the back? This must be, that's the back of the, oh, there's some old pickup truck there. Mm -hmm. Who's that? I ain't seen that. I am. Hopefully that's not the second guy. Yeah, because there's all these garages at the back to do as well. Quite different this Explore. Quite a different one, but it was here and it presented itself, so why not? Um, I've never done a bus depot before, have we? Certainly not one like this size. We tried to get him on a while back. We did, that yeah. That small one. That small one, yeah. I'll cut scene to that now. And then there's this big yard outside. Got a bit of an atrium area here. Got some random offices. As we get to the end of this mezzanine area. Got an office there, <laughs> going right through. So I wonder what this was then. Obsolete parts and archive room. Obsolete parts and what? That's a guy down there. A guy down there in high-vis. Is that a substation? Where? I've gone out of substation there. That looks like a big boiler house. There's a guy there in a pickup truck. Look. Don't know what he's all about. So I heard there wasn't a sucker on site, but he's got a high-vis on. Private number plate. Making quite a modern pickup truck. I reckon he's an opportunist. It's been a locker, and then there's all parts issue pieces here. Window bond kit, e-leather delta blue. So this is where they kept the spares for the buses as we make our way down these metal stairs as you can see they used to move a lot of heavy things around because of ramps so this is looks like the maintenance area what's this then oh oil tanks so they've got they've got on on site diesel fuel storage so there'll be big tanks out the back somewhere. They'll all be empty though. A little maintenance office here. So the stairwell should be through here. And then here is where all your drivers wrote their defects on here. Headline board. Headline board, what does that mean? Is that what number buses they put on no, and stuff? Look, it's basically when buses have uh, not gone on town. Yeah. Uh, actual miles lost. Oh, uh, when the so if a bus broke down, when it was supposed to go out on a 
run and right. it couldn't. So Lost if, mileage. If the bus is set to leave at 20 past two yeah. and it doesn't and it's supposed to get to its destination at three o'clock and it doesn't yeah. get there well quarter past three, then that'll go up on this board. I suppose it's lost revenue because that 15 minutes could have been doing something else, earning more money. Well, it's more than that. It's the um, Department of Transport's, um, how can I put it, in order to have a bus route, they have to have, um, oh, what's the word? I can't remember the word now. I don't, I don't know <laughs> what you mean. Yeah. Oh, it's, um, I it's like trains. Yeah, they've got to. Yeah, you need to have a public it's... timetable and you have to stick to that public timetable. Because do they get a subsidy based on that timetable? Quite possibly, yes. And then if they don't meet that timetable, they get a deduction of the subsidy? Yes. I'm only guessing. No, I know they'll be something They'll do some, like some sort of complicated system like yeah. that, won't they? Yeah. Rather than just say, look, you can have this much money if you run these buses. Yeah. Massively complicated for various reasons. Because we'll make our way back out into this main area. So let's check this out. So down there you can see the numbered bays for repairs of the vehicles. There's some of the floors been pulled up. Lots of broken windows now. If anyone watching used to work here or you've got information or stories about this place, please get in touch. Leave a comment in the comments box below. Now here are a lot of bays where they could drive the buses over and carry out large-scale maintenance on them. Where well, there's all the steps down for the drivers to come down and the engineers to get underneath the buses. It's quite an interesting shot that. I've just seen up here viewers, don't know if you've spotted it on your screens, but up here there's Christmas decorations. I'll try and get the try and get behind the shot so you can see it without the sun. But there's Christmas decorations on that upright. A lot of maintenance will have gone on here. Yeah, see all the grease and oil on the steps. I've done all the services on the buses to keep them running. The large maintenance bays here at Midland Road were used for the upkeep of the first bus group's fleet of various coaches and buses. It really took us some time to get used to the sheer size of this place. And this is only one third of the entire site that you can see here. So, let's make our way down and we'll look at the refuelling area. That is a big LPHW fan heater and that's the disconnect for it. Let's make our way down these oily steps. Pull over yet another pit. So this entire floor is raised. This isn't the floor height, that's the floor height. This is all on stilts. See that says engine, so I wonder if that's engine oil. Quite interesting dials and they haven't been broken. Oh that one has. I saw that and then that one's smashed. These ones haven't. I think it's engine oil. Don't smell a diesel does no. it? It's a lot thinner diesel. Is. I think the refuelling thing will be outside so this is the oil to top them back up again. Surcharge label. Repair request note, material issue number, remarks. There's a bunch of those on there. That must have been something they used here. As we look back that way, I bet that's why they uh, blew the brakes out because there's a like a curtained off area and lots of airlines. So I think that's why they maybe serviced the brakes. And there's a big exhaust duct there that could be moved. So they can put that near the wheel where they're going to blow all the dust out. Put that near the wheel and then blow the dust out with the airline. As they do the discs and pads. Right there. This. I wonder what these are. These look like uh, 
a jacking point like as if these plates lift up because there's hydraulic hoses go into it so I wonder if they went up to jack up the, the bus on here these big plates are really solid so I wonder if they could jack it up to get in behind things little mirror hello first group staff there's a notice board there think first group staff survey it's got a hoodie bump caps to be worn in inspection pit then we've got an old network switch system there Keep watching viewers because I've just seen a big boiler house there that's provided all the heating for these areas. So we'll go check those out. And then they look like the big workshops. So they're going to be interesting too. But we will be quite quiet out here. I know what that's been. That's what that guy was doing. That has been a cannabis grow of yours. That's what that is. What's this then? Steam clean over pit only. Oh, so they've had a steam cleaner. Oh, nice. They did keep the buses nice and tidy. So they've, uh, that was a grim job going underneath the bus and blasting it so all the dirt will have come down on them and I bet that was like a minimum wage job I bet that was horrid but there were lots of cannabis to smoke afterwards oh, drains are up looks like someone's been down there what we got in here then? stores Storage areas. In the fire, been stripping the cables in there, burning it off, and getting the copper out. That's what they've been doing there. What's this then? Oh, these are for filling the tanks. So, paraffin, waste oil, engine oil, what else we got? Dextron, Dextron oil, my dad will know what Dextron oil is. Energy, so that's gearbox oil. He had a lot of oils. An Outran MBX, I reckon that is automatic gearbox oil. It's in this door. Time cards. Calls coming in behind me. Some office areas. What's in here? Toilet and shower. That's the upstairs, so we'll do the upstairs first. That's the ruling goes. Do not smoke because it's all smoke damaged. Ah, I wonder if this is the tank room areas. So I can see lots of pipes. Yeah, it is. Oh, this is very unique. I haven't been in one of these since you and I were at Milford Mill. And there's that big room with all them tanks in. Massive. The tank room. Oh, that looks lovely. I love the light. I love how clean it is. I really like in this room where the ivy's grown in. If it's ivy, correct me if I'm wrong. But I love the way it's grown in. And then... Because there's been no water in here, it's all died off again. Ah, and these waste oil. And is it, is it down for each one? Yeah, they're all empty. They're all intact as well. I don't think I've ever been to an Explore where stuff ain't all smashed up like, and it's as intact as this. All the windows are pretty much intact. 
it shows how secure this place has been up until very recently. And all those KDG indicators or meters all intact and I bet they all still work. It says 1982 made in England We'll make our way back out of this immaculate storage area. They must have had disciplined staff here because usually these are the places that get left into absolute rack and ruin. They store everything up here. Highly flammable liquids and liquefied petroleum gases regulations 1972 and that was reprinted in 1978. This entire form Cost, guess how much that cost, Paul? You have to guess. And it wasn't a lot. 15. 10 pence. Never. That was 10 pence, the price is there, look. I actually meant 15 pounds, not 15 yeah. pence, but 10 pence, that's the 10 awesome. pence in 1978. Bargain. Oh, and that's the big gantry hoist that I mentioned. And that'll pull along that rail and go all the way along and you can lift things up and down with it. So we'll make our way back down. Right, we need to get in here. Spoiler house. How cool does that look? These are the things that, that go in the, you know, in the roller thing. Oh my god, yeah. That's one of those, isn't it? Is that a full one? Yeah, that's a full roll. And there are all the places around here. Dinnington, Tinsley, Catcliffe, Swallow, Swallow Nest, I'll Woodhouse. Go to, I'll go to Newton now. Huh? Why does it sound like it's still working? I think there's equipment still running here, yeah. Sounds like a D-strap fan or something. There's all the places Paul's going. That is really long, it keeps going as well. There's still more. Private. Special. Sorry not in use. Garage. Limited stock. Park and ride. School service. There's still more rail replacement, tram replacement, football. Oh, that's it, ends at football. <laughs> that is a long sign. Reminds me of the uh, titles on Star Wars, you know, when they scroll up the screen. <laughs> With these boilers, Parkinson Cohen, GWB's Belkos Multi Fuel. And these are coal fired boilers. There's the hopper above. So that's the coal crusher. So that's the hopper, the large hopper. So that would have had soil lumps of coal in. And then this alga here, this system would have crushed it up and drawn it along that blue pipe. And it would have gone in the top into the burner. Quite unique, really, that the alga's on top. So that must mean that the furnace and FD fan are on top. As we take a look inside, the spoiler. Oh yeah, that is inside the casing. And then these are the tubes on the outside. Quite an unusual design that. Yeah. The tubes are on one side, the furnace is on top. And then that looks like the soot hopper. And it looks like the soot comes out and goes down there. And there's, there's the soot lock that's left behind. That soot in there that's come out the bottom, bottom of the burner. And that's opened in its maintenance position. So these run at about 160 degrees centigrade and maximum 
150 psi or pound foot inch which is about 10 bar 10 bar of steam which is about what the stones vapor boilers used to run at on warships that I used to work on so we used to have big steam boilers steam generators they called them it's LP sat steam and that is one of the algas that I was talking about this one has been converted to oil so this one has run on oil instead of coal and that's why the alga is disconnected there and the alga has just been pulled out and if you see in the centre of the screen now that Archimedes screw arrangement is what pushes the coal along and you can actually see some coal still inside the alga where they've disconnected it when they converted it to coal air correction to oil you see the coal in there so this has been converted from coal to oil and I bet they used to run it on the waste oil because that's what I would have run it on would have been quite dirty but efficient now are your boilers one, two, three in this quite magnificent clean and not smashed up you know what Paul Something I've just realised. I haven't seen a single bit of graffiti. I haven't even. Not one piece. Not one piece of graffiti. This is... I mean, yeah, this has been abandoned a long time, but I don't think many people have been here. Well, that's why it's been... It's been the site's been so secure. Not even graffiti artists have been, and they're usually the first to get in the place. Yeah. They're the ones that's usually a big something somewhere, isn't there? I'm quite impressed with... This seems to be on some kind of swing now. Yes, it is. It's on the swing arm at the top. So you can undo the boiler casing and clean out all of the tubes because the tubes get all dirted up. You can, you can see the dirt on these. That's the blow off. That would have been quite nasty if you was in this room when that lifted because that would have just put steam into this room. And there are your boiler tubes there. And then if we swing this out the way, that will swing round. If it, oh, no, it's seized up. It's seized up there. Yeah, but these are your boiler tubes. And there'll be a door at the back as well that can be undone to service those. And it's just like a big pipe brush that goes through it and cleans it all out. But they're quite rusty. There's your asbestos lagging in there to stop the steam getting out. So this is not a shock and sniff type boiler. Stay well clear if you don't understand them. You know, you like your RV on the windows. Look at me, Martin. Oh yeah, where it's been coming through. Awesome. You see that in there. So I've got two coal boilers and a previous coal boiler that's been replaced with an oil burner and they've took all the soot reclaim out and it's just blown the flue gas that way. Yeah, the hoppers. Yeah. Coal hoppers, yeah. Massive coal hoppers, so there'll be a big coal bunker above somewhere. A uh, coal delivery point, they all have to have a look up there because this one's redundant and I bet there's coal in it still. And these ones, they might have run until they were empty and then just ran on oil. There's a big steam relief valve there so it can relieve up that pipe and the steam goes out to atmosphere rather than into the room where the boiler is. This is the boiler control panel. So I've got manual, hand, screw control, put that in hand, and then low feed. So that's been in low feed in hand, manual and reset. And then the actual boiler control, that's your FD fan. And that is your boiler. What else we got back here? So this is the back of the furnace there's your final heat exchanger there before it goes to the tubes these are the back of the backs of the boilers all right so, go to the bottom of there yeah look right to the top to the bottom corner Oh, the mirror. 
I wonder why there's that. Oh, that's that mirror glass that's in the main building. So they've stored things in here. And this, this is your big pump pit to pump the water around the entire site. So very much like a military base, like we saw at Upwood and Royal Air Force Driffield and Church Fenton. We've got a central plant, and this is what this is. This is a central plant room. And this is where all the hot water, heating and everything is supplied from. All from here. Apart from the little bit upstairs that had its own boiler. But that was just for the air handling unit. And these look like fire shutoffs. These uh, open big vents up top. This looks like a feed tank which is distilled water and that distilled water would have fed the boilers. Ah, I was wrong. Those wires are for lowering the luminaires so they could work on the luminaires which are lights and then these big open contacts connect up to contacts in the fitting to turn it back on quite antiquated but I bet it worked working our way around now that looks like a water softener so that would have been for the domestic water supply so you've got your salt bin there some charcoal filters and then the controller there to alter the conductivity of the water this looks like a that's a chilled water system or a heating system that's the expansion vessel that's the expansion vessel header so there would have been a water level in here and then compressed air on top to pressurize the system there's your air pressure, or oh, correction air, well it is the air pressure and the pressure of the water. Little control system there. We we'll work our way back round. We can see more of that pressure air cylinder there. And the header tank for it, as we look back at the rear of the three boilers. We just noticed a ladder, so let's go up and have a look at the top of them. So this is one of the coal-fired boilers. The FD fan is there, blowing air into this, where the, where the coal was crushed up and blown in, centrally there, and then ignited, and that was your burner in there. The furnace was the, the flame on that one and this one. And then further along, under this luminar, there's your relief valves that I talked about earlier. They're what blow off if the pressure gets too high inside the boiler casing. And that's an access panel that can be removed to get inside of the water side of the boiler. And this is the boiler that's been converted from coal operation to oil operation and we can see on top there's a blank where the coal burner would have been and the alga has been removed and that is indeed looking like it's got coal in it still so we'll go up to the coal bunker and have a look what a place Paul I didn't think it'd be like this I thought this would just be like a bus depot not all this as well not all this heavy plant. It's cool, isn't it? Absolutely. See how much coal's left in there. Oh no, totally empty. So they've emptied that one, you can see light through there, look. It focuses through this fine mesh. There is light through there. You'll be able to see through this panel here. Ah, oh. it's totally empty. Reminds me a bit of uh, permanite asphalt works. Go this way.
Oh, that one's still full. So we've got a coal hopper there, full of coal still. That had burned for days and days and days. And then over to this one. Not as bad, but there's still a lot of coal in there. There's, you could heat a house for about 20 years on that. The coal does lose its combustibility as the gases release out of it. But it's still burn, once you get it hot enough it'll burn. But look at how high up we are from the boilers now. The boilers are way down there now. That's to get the head of the head of the pressure of the coal. And that's how they used to fill it up. They used to pump it in out of lorries. I've never really worked out how the pump works. It must be like an Archimedes screw that comes in through these pipes. And it's sort of mushed up quite small. So when it goes into the boilers, the Archimedes screw only has to like draw it in and it just burns. So this is the boiler house. We're just going to check out the control room now. It's just through here. This is your plant and machinery room. So it was just the local controls we saw through that. Oh, look at that. CO2 analyzer. I bet they pulled the probe out when they were running that old one with oil. That third one. It's still got the, t the uh, paper in it as well. I love old stuff like that. Oh, them old beaters. They're race. I like them. Those little meters. Kind of cute. And it's all intact. See the metal thieves have been, but they haven't smashed it up. So, I mean, sadly, this will all go in the bin anyway. None of this will ever work again. But I love these old analog recorders. They're so cool. Proper 70s. Percentage obscuration. So I'm presuming that is David No, but I think that's going to be an airflow. And then how more the tubes were blocked, the higher that would go to the point where you've got to shut it down and clean it. Take some cooling down though. There we are, there's the uh, switches for all those pumps we saw in the back. And that is the control room. That was the boiler house for us. Quite a big substantial place just to be left derelict. That's where they used to leave the gas bottles. Right there. Sorry, I'm filming into the sun. I wonder what that was. Bowser thing there. If anybody knows what that was for, please leave a comment. Because I'm not sure. I, could, I think I can see a cooling tower. Let's have a look the back so don't know what that was it was a hopper for something but I don't know what and that that is a forced draft cooling tower so they've needed to cool something down quite quickly as well as it's a smaller version of what you see at power stations and this has a fan in it so the water gets pumped in at the top in the top and there's fill elements it goes down and air goes in there and it goes up past the water and it cools the water down and heats the air up and then a fan sucks it out the top and that is a forced draft cooling tower so that's where the oil replenishment area was through there then we're back in the mass area of this we need to, we've got to do all them offices yet as well, there's still more to do. Oh, I can't get over to you how big this place is. 
It's almost you could. You could have an indoor go kart in place here. Yeah. Quite easily, because it's all flat. So I'll just check this area out. This was the cleaning station, I think it said. Oh, we can get into the offices over here as well. Right, okay. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of travellers have just turned up today as we came here, so we're going to have to be careful. Don't want to disturb them. So this is the office area. <gasps> They're tachographs. They're tachographs for the lorry, for the buses. And that is a used tachograph. Is that coming out? Can you read that? Oh, there's a big safe here. Big vault. I suppose this is where they kept the wages. It's all emptied. Oh, this is where all the coins will have come. So when you pay with your money, they come here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's various offices, central atrium now. It's like it used to be a pond. Yeah. Pond area. You can tell where the money was spent. So high this that's back out into the Yeah, them big radiators. So this is where your energy was going. You know your heat energy from them big boilers was coming in here to keep the offices warm. isn't it? Yeah, I like that, the big picture. I love this. I love these old, like, 70s constructions like this. I promise, better journeys for life. For all the different size buses. Hey Paul, bus wanker. <laughs> bus wanker. You know, it's good for us, but for everybody else, you know the people who work here, they'll actually be sick of the sight of buses. So somebody's gone to the much effort of painting a bus on the wall. To remind them that they're doing every day. Yeah. But when this would have been full of buses, there's nothing you could see were but buses, bus noises and everything. I just still can't get my head around how big this place is and it's just empty. They just didn't want it. I, it I reckon it was more than eight. <laughs> but I don't know. The next one now. Oh nine, yeah. As we move round to there's like a motor and pump room there. Can you imagine? You've got to do six mile an hour. What a strange speed. And that is the travellers working up now, so we need to wrap up and get there, get out of here. So I got the quad bikes out going round the outside, just like the trailer park girls, and we need to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching this ALW research team video. If you haven't already, please subscribe on that button there, because it really helps me out when you do that, it's totally free. And whilst you're here, why not watch this video next, and I'll see you every Thursday at 4pm UK time. Bye bye for now. Press that.